One of the great advantages of being a minister in the countryside is that Jesus, of course, himself was a, was a country lad. My name's Sue and I'm a Methodist minister. Well, it was a tough challenge for me being in the countryside. I'd always lived in the inner city and then just on the outskirts of the city. The countryside is totally different from how I thought it should be. What I didn't know was how isolating it can be. And so although isolation is a problem, it's a great opportunity for evangelism. And the church's role is to just open up the buildings and provide these places where folk can just come and friendships and fellowships can be made. I believe in the Missio Dei, which is God already at work. And I believe that the role of the church is simply to join in with what God has already planned. And so a lot of it is to do with listening around. Uh, for instance, when I was on the sheep farm over in West Yorkshire, there were a lot of community festivals and a lot of them had legends uh, attached to them, like the Cuckoo Festival, which was a crazy one. And um, It was uh, in spring and the whole village would come alive and there'd be you know, street jesters and dancing in the streets and stalls and the usual sort of festive stuff. And the, one of the churches was at the, the end of this main street and the doors remained closed throughout the whole festival. So one thing we did, we started to open the doors and then we started joining in with the community festivals and doing almost as the first century Christians did, Christianizing them. Uh, for instance, we had a jazz festival. I remember one particular one we did, it's raining jazz, hallelujah, and we paraded around the streets with umbrellas and things. And there were so many people came into that church that morning that we had to relate into the hall and then outside. We talked about hundreds of people in a village church. One of our ladies saw some mums just uh, on the corner and uh, they dropped the kids off from school and it was raining and, and she just went up to them and she said, if we put cups of tea on in the church, would you come? And they said, if you put us some toast on, we'll definitely come. And so the tea and toast project was born. 60 odd young parents would come and older people too. The rural bus had dropped them off outside the building. Uh, they'd done a bit of shopping and then they came in for tea and toast. A walkers group who were into health at that time, a walkers group would set off from the church and come back for tea and toast. And this huge project uh, came from something simple like tea and toast. We've got more baptisms, a request for baptisms and weddings and, and all sorts of things. And people just wanting to talk. Um, and sometimes realising that we were open Sundays and that was a good place uh, and, and good people to hang around with and eventually some of them would come to faith. We were aided by um, traditional courses like the Start course and the Y course and the Alpha course. Uh, yes we were, um, but people just feeling the love of Jesus was the main thing. Each place that I've worked as a Methodist minister have had um, different ways of outreach and it's listening and tuning in with what's appropriate for that particular area. Thank you.